you know, sometimes when you don't know if you're supposed to do something or not, and that's what I, where I was at when Lisa texted me, and I was like, I don't know. But, you know, the very thing that God sent me free from is the things that wanted to come back up. And I was like, okay, Satan, I get you. I'm not going back down that road. So I was like, okay, I'll do this. Um, but I wanted to just give a little bit of a testimony of where I came from because sometimes something comes into your life from a very young age, sometimes before you're born. You don't even realize it's there and it's a part of who you are, part of what and you don't even know that it's uh, something from the enemy. I was raised, born and raised in an Amish home, which is very performance. Um, in the culture, it was very, um, like, based on rules. Their acceptance is based on your performance. And that's how I approached God, was just through the performance mentality and that religion that Whatever I had to, everything I did, if I read my Bible enough, I was accepted. If I didn't pray enough, I wasn't accepted. Just working through that and trying to build my relationship with God through performance. And so it's very exhausting because you're never good enough. Anyway, so that started very early on. But I love that God's faithful in meeting us right where we're at because, you know, I didn't know anything about the demonic, about spiritual warfare. I never heard that you could say, stop in Jesus' name. None of that. I didn't. So anything I was dealing with, I just tried to overcome it on my own. You know, little by little, God reveals himself. And he, I, um, I think I was about maybe 10 or 12 years. No, it was probably more than that. When I first was exposed to that, it, I went to a conference called Take Back Your Life. And they just taught about spiritual warfare and, and uh, different things like that. And that's where I started this journey. And through the years, just, you know, sometimes we think we've arrived. But little by little, he just kept, keeps taking us to the next step. I guess it was, you know, I always, I, like, because of the performance, I felt like I wasn't as good as Amber. I wasn't as good as Lisa. I was never going to get there. I felt like I couldn't hear from God. Uh, everybody, if I wanted to get set free, I, it had to be through somebody else because God wasn't going to do it. I wasn't going to be able to do it on my own. But you know, the enemy is a liar. He's always a liar, and that's what he fed me. He, my, I mean, all the lies. I, I mean, the list of lies is long. <laughs> the list of the truth is even longer. So, um, we, uh, they talked about the set yourself free class that we do here, and Amber was teaching that. And so kind of as a last-ditch effort, I was desperate. I was miserable inside. My life looked great on the outside, but inside I felt dead. I felt like I was doing it all on my own. It was all from my head, and I was like, this is just the last-ditch effort. I'm going to do this. And so I went through the classes, and there was little bits and pieces I got, and then we hit the religious spirit class. And I remember texting Amber, and I took a picture of the book, and I said, this is exactly how I feel inside. It said, it talks about men, Matthew 23 talks about men who look good on the outside but were dead on the inside. And that's exactly how I felt. And I told her, I said, I don't, I don't know how to get free from this. I don't know how. I said, it feels like it's part of who I am. I said, I don't know what part's me and what part's somebody, like what part's a, a spirit. So anyway, we went through the class and, and that evening, Lisa, I ended up praying with Lisa that night, or she ended up praying with me, I guess. <laughs> you know, the, every, there are so many lies. You're never going to be good enough. You're not, it's not real. You're imag it's just your imagination. Like, you can't hear from God. You're never going to hear from God. It's just performance, all that stuff. And when she broke this, when that spirit of religion was broken off my life for the first time, I could hear truth. And... You know, the truth is he loves me for me. I don't have to be with what somebody else is. He wants his own relationship with me. And um, when that was gone, joy, peace, I mean, boldness. I felt a... a gentleness with my boys that I'd never felt before. My husband was actually going on a trip, and when he came home, he looked at me and he said, something happened to you. You're not the same anymore. <laughs> so, so he came home to a new wife. <laughs> uh, 
But he, one thing that when I had to, because the enemy had such a grip on my mind, I had to write all, I, that's why these papers are here. I wrote, I went home that night, I wrote all the lies down, and then I got the papers and I wrote all the truths down. Because he comes back with him. He tries to bring him back up. And so when he comes back with his lies now, I'm like, here's my truth list. Just get out of the way. Because <laughs> I am not listening to that. He's faithful. He took all my ashes and he turned them for beauty. His truth will always bring peace and joy. So. Amen.